Welcome to my Rocket League mechanic series, and today we'll be talking about aerials. Aerials are arguably the most important mechanic to learn, and whether if you call them double jumps or fast aerials, they are the key to setting up most air dribbles, flip resets, and even redirects. They become the basis of getting most plays and opportunities on the pitch, and even if that ball's up by the ceiling, you still need to be able to shoot it on net. Alright, so now that we've talked a bit about the importance of double jump aerials, or really just kind of introduced them, let's enter into free play real quick. And let's make sure our settings in the training settings section are set to standard, not limited or auto refill, but standard boost for the boost options. That way we can end up, you know, keeping track of how much boost we use to make these aerials, or the same idea when we're going through the testing or training, we know exactly where, what stage you're at in your overall practice. So first thing that you're going to want to understand about double jump aerials, and if we isolate a couple of the key focuses of them, so that way you can make sure they're as efficient or as effective as possible, is you have a couple of mechanics that need to be understood. There's a really great video about this if you want the absolute details and a full breakdown um, made by Rocket Science quite a few years ago. But the biggest thing to understand is that you basically have about 0.2 seconds to hold your first jump. And so a great example is if we hold up here, right here next to our, uh, our goal post, and we do a short single jump, we'll see that we're not even reaching that white line right there, right, on this goal. But if we hold the jump, we actually get above that white line quite effectively. And again, I'm only using one jump here, because if I jump again on the way down, right, you can see I stall a bit because I have one more jump on the way down. And so, as we go through this, we can basically determine that with two soft jumps, we only get about halfway up the goal. But if we hold the jump, right, and we get that first held jump, we can get quite a bit higher than halfway up. We're actually really close to touching the top of the goal here, right? And so the more efficient we make that, the faster we make it, the better it's gonna be to a degree. And knowing that 0.2 seconds is the whole time, we can actually understand that we only need to, you know, have two jumps within about 0.25-ish seconds or about a quarter of a second, right? And one nice little mechanic or thing that you might wanna know about this as well is that 0.2 seconds actually extends the time that you get to hold your first jump, your or hold your, your dodge for. So first, if you do a soft jump, like off the wall here, you only get about 1.2 seconds to make the flip, but, if I come over again, I reset, I hold the first jump off the wall, I have 1.45 seconds to make the flip. And so you'll end up having a bit more time before the dodge is burned in that same overall aerial, the same opportunity. But to keep ourselves on track here, focus the double jump barrel, we basically want to be getting a hold jump and a soft jump within about a quarter of a second. Great way to practice this, go onto YouTube, type in 240 BPM, or if you want to have, you know, a close enough situation, 250 BPM, because it'll be a little bit, uh, it'll give you a little bit uh, shorter of a time to work on it, so you can be a little late, right? And this will basically give you the idea of what a quarter of a second is going to feel like. And now if you're a little slow to it, you're still working your way up to what would be a perfect double jump aerial. And so I'll click the mention I'm on here, and you can hear its pace. And we're just going to sit here, we're going to practice a couple of double jumps, focus on the timing. Right, and you can see I'm still getting basically the height we're looking for. Right, and getting up to that crossbar. Now, one thing to keep in mind that helped me a ton when I was working on this as an individual and so I could teach it to players and so on, try not to think about holding the first jump, just do a hard press. If I think about holding it, I'll generally be pretty late on my second jump. But if I just think press it hard and I'm still just trying to keep it time, it'd be like two hard presses, boom, boom, you know? And I'm thinking about just getting a really hard press and that hard press will give you about 0.2 seconds of hold. You know, it's, it's a very instinctual thing that you'll be able to get because to be honest, understanding and grasping how long 0.2 seconds is is like near impossible very very difficult to do honestly i would argue that really only like top level musicians could do something like that when they've practiced with metronomes for thousands of hours um on the outside of for most people though i would say just reset yourself and just practice that timing with boom boom you know now that we've kind of understood the timing let's add a pullback in there the best time to pull back is actually at the beginning before you even jump because now we're guaranteeing a max pullback speed and so we just jump at least jump and that's it right we'll get about 45 degrees of nose angle if you're doing it really quick you might only get 30 degrees of nose angle and if you do it while you're standing right see I'm, I'm, I'm getting about 45 average that's pretty much what you want anything more than 45 and you're probably too slow on that on that second jump press you really want to be quick enough whoops you want to be quick enough to where you're getting about 30 to 45 degrees of your nose angle by the end of it now Add in that second pullback and get your nose vertical, and you basically have the idea of what you need to make your double jump aerial effective. Once you're comfortable making your nose vertical in that quick motion, pullback, jump release, jump, pullback, right? 
pull back, jump, release, jump, pull back, pull back, jump, release, jump, pull back. So pull back, jump, release, jump, pull back. And you're, getting, you're used to getting your nose vertical. Grab one 12 pad here on your way through, and now you have 45 boost. If you're doing it effective and quick enough, you should be able to easily reach the ceiling with 45 boost, no problem, right? If you're doing it very effective and very quick, you're not thinking about it too much because you practice the first steps a lot, you should be able to very easily get to that point. Now, that is just the first test. If you can do 45 boost, I would argue that's good enough to get all the way up to GC2, GC3, and that's plenty fast material. If you're a, if you're bronze, you know, silver, gold, diamond champion, and you can do 45 boost, you probably need to work on other areas or get yourself more consistent with it and be able to accomplish it 10 out of 10 times perfect. You can see like, as I'm doing it with 45, there's no way I mess up on this. It is super easy. I could do that all day. Once you can do that comfortably, you wanna to go to that next level. And this next level, I would say, could take you all the way to Pro League because there's been times where I used to stream and people would ask me, you know, what, how far can your players go? How far can your pros go? And so my players generally were able to do 41, no problem. And I'd be like, that's fine because 38 is the farthest I can prove, right? But that 41, 10 out of 10 times perfect is really all you need. And the best example I have of this is I think one of my players one time went to like AJ stream or some, some mechanical pro stream and they asked them if they could reach the ceiling with 38 boost. And they sat there, I think, for half an hour, an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and they couldn't get a flip yourself the ceiling once with 38 boost. It is possible. I'll, I'll link a, a recording of it right here. I'll, um, but at the end of the day, it's like if AJ or, or a top mechanical pro can't do it, then why would you have to be able to do it, right? If they can get away with 41, then you should too. And so really, I would argue that the more important thing is we'll do 41 consistently, 10 out of 10 times without failure, way before you even think about trying to get it down to 38. If you do 38, awesome, bonus points, hey, you do you, good stuff. But really in that 41, 10 out of 10 times here, like I'm doing right now, just grab the 12 pad, grab, go up to the aerial, right? Make it happen off the ceiling, you're done, boom, double jump aerial, perfect. After that, now we gotta talk about implementing in your game. At 45 boost, you can also do this. You don't have to get to 41 first, but at 45 boost, I'd recommend getting an aerial shots pass or double tap playground by weight protein. And if you wanna work on double taps or flip resets, set yourself starting boost, maybe 33 like you would in game. So let's say you spawn out of the corner, you just collect this 112 pad right here, right? So you get your 45. And now we're gonna jump up for our double tap, you know, and go for the shot. And I got a double tap, but I couldn't put it in net, but even then, I'm still getting to the ball. I'm getting double tap. I still have 10 boosts left over to finish it. And there we go. I get my double tap in the net. And with practice, you should be able to do at least the first shot of whey protein, uh, you know, uh, play, uh, double tap playground here with your 45 boost or your 33 starting boost to basically get your double tap in the net. So we'll just do an aerial shots uh, uh, pass pack here from Bokito. Great, great overall training pack uh, uh, maker. But basically we have our 33 starting boost and we wanna make sure we can reach this high ball here with our 33 starting boost. And I even have seven left over by the time I'm touching it there to adjust my shot, eight left over to adjust my shot. So if I need to, I come up, right? I need to adjust my shot down a little bit. I can adjust it down. If I, you know, come up and I need to adjust my shot forward a little bit, I didn't save the boost on that one. But if I need to adjust my shot forward or down or whatever it comes down to a little bit, you know, I have the ability to do that. Or as same idea there where I had just enough boost to get above it, it's the same kind of idea. You wanna have that freedom. And that's similar to here reading this uh, opportunity off the backboard. The faster, the more efficient you are, the more you can get out of this touch and the same opportunity. And so you want to be working on these opportunities. And this is a great segue right here for this shot right now to talk about the effectiveness of having that held first jump or practicing this because a simple single jump aerial into a flip shot like that or, or to finish it with a power shot by flipping into it is going to be the same overall starting motion as a double jump aerial. You just don't use the second jump. You just continue pulling back and then you rock your joystick forward to finish with your flip. It's as simple as that. And so the baseline for shots, aerials, uh, or aerial shots, uh, 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 flip resets, double taps, whatever it comes down to is all going to be based on your double jump aerial or your effectiveness of this. Anyway, with that said, I would love for you guys to continue practicing this and to let me know what you'd like to learn next in mechanics and whatnot. Um, might not be episode two for the mechanic series, but maybe episode three or four. And uh, with that, let me know how your arrows are going. Can any of you hit 38 boost? You know, if you can, maybe share another gif of yourself doing it and flex your ability down in the comments kind of deal. Uh, but when it comes down to it, you know, thanks for coming by and uh, good luck.